Welcome back Troglodytes to another episode of Trogly's Guitars. Today we have the King of Les Pauls, the V Les Paul. This was a shortly lived series from 1976 through 1979 where about 20 of them were in wine red, a little over 20, and the rest of them were in this natural finish. These were made using the finest woods available at the time. As you can see, a beautifully flamed top, but not just a top, a beautifully flamed sides and back and neck. This was the cream of the crop, so to speak. What the claim to fame for this guitar is, is everything that would normally be plastic on a guitar was wood. When we're talking about the pick guard, uh, the poker chip, the knobs, and uh, the nut was kind of different on these. However, you're going to notice, you know, I said this was wood, but this is brass on this one. Towards the end of the run, they ran out of these specially commissioned parts. Gibson did not make these parts. I forget what company they had do them. But they ran out of the parts towards the end. This is a 1979 V Les Paul. It was made at the very end of 79. And this was the 62nd one made. So it's a late run edition. It doesn't have all the wooden parts, but it's kind of cool to have one that has the brass parts as well. It has a brass nut instead of the, uh, the scalloped nut. But it still does have the wooden truss rod cover, which is great. Now this guitar is 100% stock. Nothing has been changed. So this is how it came from the factory. There are many famous users of this guitar. I know Steve Howe had a wine red one of the band Yes, and his is actually currently for sale at $40,000. And the Guitars for Heart actually used one of these on a video of Crazy On You. You can see that here live on YouTube. That one actually broke the headstock at some point in time. It's been for sale somewhere at some point in time. I remember talking to the guy that used to own that guitar. I mean, these are very special guitars. Uh, something else that's special about them is their fretboards are an ebony rosewood ebony kind of you know mixture and they have these red lines with black binding and the binding on this is also rosewood so these are just fantastic collectors guitars however they do sound fantastic plugged in they're very bright sounding guitars with all this maple everywhere so let's go ahead and dive in and look at the condition this guitar is collector grade However, it does have some finish checking, which is very common on these. You can kind of see the headstock veneer has a rosewood veneer to it. And you have abalone, mother of pearl inlays. I believe these are abalone, this is still mother of pearl. But it's just gorgeous here. But you do have a small scratch right here that you can occasionally see. But it's not too bad. And the end, there is some very minor lacquer shrinking by the custom logo at the end there. But overall, the headstock is in great shape. Uh, no cracks to the wooden truss rod cover or anything. Brass nuts in good shape. Uh, the frets don't show, you know, hardly any wear. I mean, you'll have some light wear, you know, from sitting in the case. But once again, beautiful ebony rosewood ebony fretboard. That's why I kind of like these, because they remind me of Spotlight Specials with that down there. But just gorgeous inlays. I really like the red outline that the binding gives to it. Now these came stock with T-top pickups. I would have guessed just by looking at this model that it would have super humbuckers like the 2550th anniversary, those tarbacks. But I was surprised they are T-top pickups. The top is very clean. I mean, once again, this is collector's grade. And I really don't see you know too many major nicks or dings on the top of this guitar. I, mean, I do see a very tiny scratch kind of going along there. You catch it at the light just right. I'm not sure if that's showing up, but it's very minor. And then just, you know, a few little small scratches in that area. But, you know, nothing major that really deteriorates from the way this guitar looks. You can see there are some very light finish checks in uh, finish checks slash scratches in this cutaway area. Hopefully those are kind of showing up there. 
anything that's you know cosmetically wrong with this guitar are just minuscule little finish checks that every time you look over the guitar you see a new one and then half the time you miss them but the front of the guitar is nice and clean onto the back of the headstock these all have a mother of pearl plaque here this is regular number 62 made 11 20 79 you can see that there is some very minor finish checking around the tuner there I'm not sure if that's showing up either <laughs> you're just blinded by all the flame on this guitar but there is some stemming kind of from where the uh, tuners have been it kind of follows this little line right there and from there but they have the normal Schaller made Gibson tuners but they have these uh, pearl tips to them so it's a very prestigious look for them and you're gonna notice this thing has a huge volume that is like I would probably say that's almost three times higher than a normal Volu. They really wanted that to be pronounced on these, the Les Pauls. Let's see another finish check kind of right there. Another area that has some finish checking is right here by the nut. There is a little one that kind of follows the fretboard that's not really showing up at this angle, but it is there, trust me. The neck is very thin and 60s profiled, but beautifully flamed as you can see here. No major nicks or dings to the neck, but a very gorgeous piece here. Just, I love how active this guitar is. It's crazy. I've actually been lucky enough to own three of these, you know, three at one time together. This is the only one I have left. The other one, one went to uh, Paris, the other one went to a private collector in Dallas. So this one is still looking for a home. That's why I thought I would redo this video in my new style because I don't think I'll ever get another one of these. But the back is beautifully flamed. There's no major, you know, nicks or dings in it. We'll run the light around here. And the back plates are also made of that same rosewood material, both of them. And the sides of the guitar are also flamed. And just take a look at that rosewood binding. It really does add a prestigious look to this guitar. I mean, it is heavily flamed, so any small, minuscule little finish checks, you're not really gonna see you know, all the time unless you know, you're know you going over it with a fine tooth comb. Now, I do wanna go over on this side. There is a little bit of wear here from where it rubs against the case. The original case for these guitars are Artist Series guitar cases, and they're not the best cases in the world. They're not the best form fitting, but they're fancy. Overall, a V Les Paul is a must have for every collector, especially if you really like customs, because once again, these are king of the customs. Now, they did have some leftover wood, but I'm assuming they kind of ran out of all the other special pieces, and they made something called a Super Custom that basically is the marriage of a V Les Paul and a 2550th anniversary. I believe they made those, uh, you know, from early 80 to like very early 84. I don't know exact numbers on those ones, but those are also some very cool customs that are out there. This is where the Les Pauls look really cool. It's under black light. You can see the lacquer wasn't really applied evenly or it kind of sunk into the headstock so it is a little discolored in some areas but no touch-ups have been done. You can kind of see that area that I was talking about where the lacquer has shrunk a little bit on the custom logo there better. And I love the way the truss rod cover looks under black light. It just looks very cool. Once again brass nut is stock from the factory. I do actually have a new old stock nut that would traditionally be seen on these guitars if you're interested in swapping that out. But abalone, mother of pearl, slash inlays there. And now the body. Now all of the wooden parts, as you're seeing here, glow because they were also lacquered. The backs of them are not though. You can see the knobs don't quite glow as much. But you can see the finish is glowing the color it should. This is a very lightly aged example. Natural will eventually turn a very dark yellow. This is probably one of the more yellow examples I've had. 
I've had, you know, mint condition unaged ones, but you know, this one had the least checking, but over the years or so that I've had it, uh, it's developed a few minor checks by itself. Something I forgot to go over here is there are two little scratches there in the binding. They're kind of like finished checks, but I think they just scratched it somehow. And you've got some very light clear coat wear that you can see here under black light there. For this part, there was a little bit of a sticky substance over it, kind of like sticker residue. So I'm guessing that might have caused the lacquer to age differently. I don't think that's a touch up or anything at the top, but there is no repair. But once again, number 62. And you know, no major cracks or repairs or anything. This like is that. a collector's grade the Les Paul. Even though I think headstock repair the Les Pauls are even cooler because you don't have to be scared to play them. I had one that was a little bit more worn than this one, and that was a fantastic guitar to play. This one's kind of like that happy medium. It's not 100% perfect, but it's not trashed either. So you're not 100% scared to play it, but you still want to keep it nice. You've got some very minor lacquer cracking around the uh, heel joint, but nothing to worry about. Follow the sides of the guitar here. And I'm guessing it came from the factory that way, but I mean, it could be light clear coat wear. Actually, you know what that is? That's from it sliding around in the case. That's how that lacquer wear happens. Those artist cases look cool, but they're garbage. I would suggest getting a nice chainsaw case for this guitar. You can see the back plates were also lacquered everything is the color it should be. This particular example weighs 10 pounds 9.2 ounces which isn't too bad considering all the maple that this guitar is made of. And here's the famous Gibson Artist Series case. These are just really fancy cases with fancy Tolex. They made them for an SG and what I believe they call a Sorrento. It's kind of like a uh, it's, it's an interesting case. It's kind of hard to describe. It's kind of cowboy themed in a way. That's kind of the way I think of them. But they had a black Artist Series case and a red Artist Series case for the Les Paul. But you can see this one has lots of storage wear. I've taken this guitar to a few guitar shows now and it definitely always draws in a lot of attention. But I was dumb enough to take it in this case that one time. And then the one time I do take it, a Japanese guy wanted to buy it because, you know, they like very fine guitars. And since I didn't have the original case with me, we weren't able to make a deal. I mean, I do have it. I just don't like to take this out because these cases are fancy. As you can see, they got a beautiful Gibson banner there, but they're garbage for holding such a good guitar. They only have one neck rest and the fit. I mean, they're just a little bit too big, and I'll show you that here in a second. Alright, so time to test the fit on this factory case. Side to side, it's pretty good. Not all of them are this good. This one still has, you know, pretty good padding. But now let's see up and down from the factory. Up, down, up, down. That's garbage. That's unacceptable. I don't see why they released these cases the way they did. A chainsaw case is a much better fit for this guitar and that's why you're kind of seeing wear around the lacquer and you do have the original case key in here. For the clean tones we'll be running through a Gibson Super Gold Tone GA30RV. For distorted tones we'll be running through a Marshall JMP1C.
think it might be interesting in owning this piece of Gibson history, feel free to contact me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash troglies, T-R-O-G-O-Y-S, or check out the Reverb or eBay listings. All right, Troglies, I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time. Take care.